Hi there folks, Simon here. This is the 2023 Beginner Tack Tournament of January. This is the quarterfinals match between Sky and Tones. Now, if we take a look here, we see that Tones and Sky are here in the quarterfinals. And whoever wins will be going on to the semifinals to play against a Delta. And it looks like we've got USA versus Spain here, so that'll be a fun matchup. Uh, both of these players did pretty well in the initial round robin stage. Obviously, they did pretty well, considering that they moved on to this finals area. So we've got the quarterfinals now, and I think we're going to be seeing a pretty solid game between these two players. Uh, they're both fairly new, but also fairly experienced as far as beginners go. So I think we're going to see some good stuff here. And looks like we're going to have Tones in white and Sky in black for game one. This is played with a 15 minute timer and a 10 second increment, and there is no Komi in these games. So without any further ado, let's jump right in to game one of this quarterfinals match. All right, we're seeing an unorthodox opening here, placing black on this B1 spot, not in a corner. We basically always see a corner placement, and then, uh, Sky is saying, all right, that's fine. I'm just going to place you right next to me. Sort of um, making the hug opening, but uh, from the opposite person. So that's an interesting, interesting play, I'd say. We get Tones immediately playing in for that center control here. This is a pretty standard position here for the hug opening. Just typically with... Uh, with these pieces reversed, I think, is what that is. But I could be thinking wrong. No, pieces in the same spot. Yeah, this is a standard for the hug opening. It's just interesting that it happened uh, this way. <laughs> Looks like Tone's taking his time to kind of determine what to do here. Might be thinking of placing a capstone here at B2 which is something that we've seen a number of times, capstone at B2, capstone at B4. Either of those have been used quite a bit. Looks like playing up here at B4 with a flat instead. This capstone at B2 is looking a lot better after every move. Black probably wants to be placing at B2 at some point, so white wants to get in there before black does. If white does drop a flat here, black can drop a capstone at C2, and uh, that could be problematic. It's tough to say what, uh, what these players are going to do. Uh, I recently got done commentating on the TAC Championship Tournament. Okay, take a look at this. So we see white dropping a capstone here up at C5 to be able to capture down. Black knows what's going to happen with that, so brings that flat down, isolating white's capstone. So one of the things we talk about in the capstones video of TAC University is where to place the capstone. And one of the key principles is to place it in a place where it cannot be isolated. And that's exactly what happened here. And white may be paying for that fairly soon. But like I was saying, I recently commentated on the TAC Championship Tournament. So play there was at a very high level, the highest level of TAC. And I got used to that. But this is going to be a little bit different. We're going to see a little bit more unorthodox play from these players because they are beginners. They haven't uh, been been playing the game for 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 years or in in the case of of our recent winner uh, one year <laughs> but we are seeing black continue to build out on this way and block off white for this horizontal line white is probably going to want to come down with a self capture with that capstone at some point to be able to get that capstone in the game or force black to make some sort of move to get uh, white able to capture down, right, left, something onto one of their pieces.
Black does come left, interestingly. Uh, white probably going to drop something here or here. D5 seems to make a lot of sense right now. Uh, also E4, both of them not too bad. I think D5 makes a little bit more sense because it works towards white's uh, vertical a little bit better. Either one would work for white's horizontal and vertical, and either one would help shut down black's horizontal. Uh, if you're worried about black's vertical, d5 works better. If you're worried about black's horizontal, e4 works better. But instead, he drops a wall here at c2. Now, I think the idea is to be able to capture up onto c3 to liberate that captive. But now black's finally dropped that capstone to be able to get into the match here. Might be coming up or capturing onto this C2 wall. Those don't seem too bad to me. Hmm. Yeah, I'm interested to see what White's play is here, because it seems like White's play should be to bring that wall up onto C3. That seems like that was his play all along. Maybe he wanted to bring it over onto B2. Uh, Got to drop a flat instead, potentially giving Black the opportunity to smash that wall or to come over up onto D3 to continue going for that... Uh, or that vertical threat and to cut off white from building that horizontal threat instead comes down interesting i'm not quite sure what the play is for that i think white's going to want to fill in now at d4 because now white has momentum in this horizontal direction for building a road it's been black for a while but now white can drop at d4 to continue that and then black would have to make some sort of play to cut off white's uh, road threat abilities likely with a flat at a4 but then white white would potentially play up at a5 to continue that so tough to say so he does play at a4 now white may want to drop at a5 may want to drop down at a3 uh, because that brings another piece able to come right onto B3 and also to come up onto A4 to continue that horizontal road threat. Um, A3 looks good to me. A5 looks good to me. F4 isn't terrible either. White still has momentum here. Does drop the F4. White, Im Black immediately captures right with the A4 flat onto B4. Cutting that off. White can just place now at B5 to make that road threat yet again. Place it A5 instead. Okay, I understand why. I feel like B5 is better here. Um, because once b5 is played, if a5 gets played, then white plays up at b6 to continue that or plays down at a4 and either one of those work to continue that threat. Black may be waiting for a non-threat moment to bring that capstone up onto d3. But got to defend against these, these threats from white. Black can drop at B5. Yeah, B5 could drop here. And that would cut it off and also make attack threat for Black. White would probably just capture to the right with the A5. Or place at B6. Yeah, placing at B6 is better here. Uh, so black's got a threat, but white can place up at b6 and create their own threat while also blocking off black's threat. Which is exactly what black just did 
to white. So it would uh, it would seem right. Both players very close to a road right now. Hmm. Brings the capstone over. So this is also a threat. I, I feel like b6 was a way stronger play there. Uh, but bringing the capstone over is more of a play, more likely of a play that we'd see in uh, a, this type of tournament with beginners like this. So that totally makes sense. Uh, black capturing, getting that away from the capstone. White probably going to place now at, at c5 to continue this threat. Yeah, white placing at c5 makes a lot of sense here. That c2 plus capture happening eventually is, is almost inevitable at this point. It does make the capture first, so not continuing the threat line. Wants to bring that wall up first. Hmm. Okay, quick action here. We see black just place to, guess, I guess, continue this threat line. And then immediately white throws that wall up to be able to spread left for the road. And then white, uh, black drops the wall to stop it, which was the only thing to really keep this road from happening. If he had come up with D3, white would have just recaptured and that would have been that. Um, at this point... White should smash here. White smashing makes a lot of sense. Um, it's not Tinue. Um, pretty positive it's not Tinue. But it is dang close. Uh, now I think a B6 placement from White would renew that, that road threat. Or... Yeah, B6 placement from White renews the threat. And allows white to maybe capture right with just the capstone to be able to come left and smash. Um, but if black defends by coming up... Oh, didn't see it. He didn't see the threat. So now white can come down with b6 for the road. Tones wins game one of this quarterfinals match in the 2023 Beginner Tech Tournament of January. And that was exciting. It was it was interesting. Not Tinue, missed threat, but we will see the majority of these beginner tack tournament games, uh, they will end in a missed threat. It's just something when when you have played the game for a long time, you can spot these threats a lot easier and you can see these. But if you're a beginner, if you're new to the game, you haven't played too often, it's very easy to miss these threats. And that's going to be the end of the game most times. Um, so if you are new to the game and playing and you think, oh, I didn't see that threat or I, I miss threats all the time, don't worry about it. That everyone does it. Um, everyone will do it. The only thing to really help you out is just play more games and you will see more threats. So anyway, here we are with game two, not messing around, just going right into it. Game two, sky versus tones, sky in white, tones in black. We're seeing now a more traditional placement of corner. Now will black place white stone next to for the hug? No, opposite corners here. And then sky immediately going in for an edge crawl opening, which 
is a dominant strategy in 5x5, five five, but as we talk about in the openings video of TAC University, not really a great type of, of strategy here for a 6x6 six six game. And that's because you are one more space removed from the center, you, are, you have one extra turn to stop this edge crawl, so it's not as immediate and not as, as pressing a threat. So a lot that you can do here uh, as black to shut this down before it gets too far. And that's one of the ways right there, just placing at C2. And now that he's got that flat up at C4, he's got momentum in the vertical direction. That's exactly what we expected white to drop that capstone right there in between to continue that threat direction. Black probably wants to drop at B3. Oh, going to drop the capstone here at, at D3. Um, not a bad play, actually. White's going to continue that, that line, going to go for that road, placing at B2, going to place at A2 next to bring that capstone down to continue that. Black... Hmm. Black could be dropping at B1, A2. Um... B1 and A2 feel like the best ones right now. Yeah, B1. I like B1 the most at this point. I think that's the best play. Because what it does is it sets it up. Because white is not making a threat right now. And you know you're going to be bringing this capstone down onto D2 at some point to stop this horizontal threat. Now, once you do bring that down, what do you do with this capstone? Do you go for this vertical line? You can't because this capstone's here. It's probably going to come down. But if you got B1 here, you can start going for this horizontal as well. And so black instead decides to drop a wall here. This wall doesn't seem great to me. Um, but that capture did not seem great to me either. Um, I think here black can drop at D2 and be fine with just a flat at D2. Yeah, does decide to drop a flat at D2, and then white immediately captures down. Now, this is where, if you had played B1 earlier, you could have been able to capture over on this or drop something next to it. Now, a wall here looks really good at B1 to be able to capture right, but then that capstone comes down and starts to mess with things. Um, I think that... Black probably wants to just drop a flat here at B1. Um, they have that flat at D2 to be able to come down onto D1 and kind of mess with things, so I think that's fine. Yeah, Black decides to drop the wall. That's a good play because it allows Black to capture over onto that big stack and oh i thought white for sure was going to bring that capstone down now that this capstone has not come down black should definitely capture onto the c1 stack and then be able to run that to the right and mess with all of those flats like put them way behind so now this is where black needs to capture over and they do to stop that threat okay threat is stopped if white comes down, black just spreads to the right and makes a huge flat count differential move, uh, a positive flat count differential move. That would be a plus five flat count differential move. And if you're wondering, what the heck are you talking about? Uh, we talk about this in the FCD or flat count differential video of Tank University. It's where you are increasing your flat count relative to your opponents. So taking this whole stack, dropping one black, one black, and then the wall stack here takes away three white flats and adds two black flats. That's a plus five move. So really, really strong. Uh, that's exactly what black's going to be doing here. Black should be playing probably at D6 here uh, to be able to make the threat once he does spread that along, um, potentially at E3, but D6 is, is the best move right now. If I'm Tones, I'm dropping at D6, knowing I'm going to be spreading this wall stack to the right. Uh, if 
white captures over onto d2. It, there's, there's no real issue there. Now what, what black can do is bring over, I guess drop, could drop two black flats here and then drop the wall here at e1 to be able to capture up. But since he's got a flat on either side, um, it's not Tinue or anything, not setting that up because he would be able to win a capture war. But it's still pretty iffy for white. White's not in a great position here. It might look like white's ahead because they have more flats showing on the board and they're closer to a road threat right now. But black is way ahead because of this wall stack and the ability to spread that to the right. It, it gives them a huge advantage. White did make that capture. This is now a road threat for white. Black comes down with the capstone, however. Uh, not what I was expecting because that leaves this open. White not, not going to wall at d3, which is surprising. I would have expected a wall there at d3, but that is not the case. We might see a 2d2 plus um, to keep that capstone out of this vertical line. Um, white is playing up here to be able to cut off black's vertical up at the top, but also working towards their own vertical threat. Black playing at e4. <laughs> we do have some reactions from Aliono too, who is the current TAC champion. And uh, also um, notably very critical of other people's play. <laughs> Not to say that he's always right. It was a very close battle there in the TAC championship. Uh, for that final spot. However, uh, he is very vocal and critical about uh, about play he feels is is uh, is not right. <laughs> so that's why you're seeing him say e4 with three question marks. <laughs> but we do see that wall finally drop here from white. I think that's the right play. It keeps black from going for this. Now, what black wants to do is go for this horizontal up at the top row, to be honest. Like, going for this horizontal up here, that's where black needs to be spending their resources and their time. Placing up at E6, um, placing at F4, placing at C6, at B6. Any of those work towards that goal of, of that horizontal row at the top. Because he's not going to get the vertical here. He's got the wall, he's got the capstone. Both of those are going to cut him up. White looks to be going for a vertical line here. And so black going for the horizontal up at the top is going to cut that off and also work towards his own winning condition. So uh, black needs to shift gears here. It is a, a very common play for beginners to sort of get locked into an idea. And that idea might be, okay, I need to go for this vertical threat, never shifting gears to the horizontal once that vertical threat becomes hard or impossible or, or anything like that. Black can still go for it. Uh, black can spread this bottom stack out to the right and then capture over onto E2 with D2. And then that's a threat right there. But it uh, it is not... I'm not sure. I, I would go for the horizontal first and then use that as sort of um, a backup plan to go for that vertical. So the horizontal now going for the F6, uh, that would give you the anchor point on that right-hand side of the board. That seems to, to be the play here. I don't think white's going to try and do anything with these pieces over here. Could go for some sort of vertical threat once this is spread, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, doesn't go for the F6 either. It goes, goes for the D4. Uh, he, he might be planning on just winning a capture war here. Uh, we see white playing. Now I feel like the only play here is white, black playing F6, but he doesn't play F6. <laughs> 
he comes over with the capstone. Um, I guess the capstone is to be able to spread up and then capture and recover these captives. I guess that's the um, the idea behind this play. I see a future spread of C1 going to the right. If black does spread to the right here, um, that kind of pins this wall. Interesting, we did not see any of F6 placement there. I mean, he's got this wall stack just ready to spread and cut off white's threats. White plays up at f6 to cut off black from playing there. Uh, black can play now at f5 if they want to. Uh, black playing at f5 works for it. They can throw the capstone all the way. They can throw this up and they can capture up with f5 on f6 to make that. That all is fine. Uh, then black going for something like c5 or b6 or c6. All of those work totally fine. Uh, B4, not so much, but C6, B6, totally fine. So white probably wants to wall at C5. Or if they're really, really stuck on going for this vertical play around here, like F2, F3... I don't think that's going to work out for him. Um, a self-capture onto, onto that wall stack. Also not terrible. Um, you could use that, that wall, that hard capstone then, to capture up and spread and make a, a plus three move. White, instead of capturing over... I think at this point, black, mm, F4 doesn't look too bad. Uh, F4 is better than E5 here uh, because F4 is better for white than E5 because F4 works better towards this vertical for white. So yeah, F4 does get played, so that's good. Um, it also allows black to throw this capstone up onto E4 to continue a threat and... Yeah, just it's just way better than than e5, despite the fact that they both look very similar. Um, f4 is significantly better for those reasons. Now black has been in a in a much stronger position here for a number of turns, um, for for most of the game, uh, actually. Uh, basically, as soon as black was given the ability to capture down with that wall. And white didn't bring the capstone down first. Black was basically in the lead and has been carrying it this whole time. We'll see if he can continue it. Because if black does win this match, he does move on to the semifinals against a Delta. Um, if white wins this game, however, then they have to do blitz tiebreaker matches in order to determine who goes on to those semifinals. All right, what are we looking at here? Uh, White's not going to be able to make any sort of vertical threat over here because Black still has this wall stack to throw. That wall stack is there. It's not going to be a problem to shut down any threat that happens if F2 is placed or F3 is placed. Doesn't matter. Uh, also, Black can just drop a wall there if he wants, uh, and that can shut it down. Black instead comes up with the capstone. I can see what he's going for here. Now, if black spreads this stack to the right, he's cutting off white's uh, road threat and also threatening to smash this wall for a road himself. But white comes over with the capstone... Interesting. Um, if I'm black, I'm going to throw this this wall stack. And then after it's there, it can be spread up to, to F4 to recover those captives. Um, but yeah, as, as black, you 
you can kind of go here at c5. Um, c6. Yeah, a lot of a lot of moves that you can do as black. There are very few moves that are that are bad here. Uh, black playing at c3, filling in. That one I'm not too sure about. Yeah, white white playing at a2 is a tack threat for white. Because white would be able to take this capstone stack, jump it up, spread, drop one flat, and then drop the capstone here at d1. It would be 2d3 minus 1-1. One, one. And if you're thinking, what the heck is that? Uh, that is portable tack notation, what you see over here on the left-hand side. And we talk about that in the PTN, or portable tack notation video, of Tack University. Uh, white does not go for that, however. Instead, they capture left onto e6, which I'm not sure the what the point of that was. Now, we may see d2 left, which would be a tag threat for black, but probably not. Hmm. <laughs> I can see e4, I can see this spread to the right, I can see placement up here or here. <laughs> Aliano dude just saying everything wins. Yeah, black is in a very strong position here, but I wouldn't say everything wins. Um, this is, these are two people playing, humans playing. Humans make mistakes, humans make uh, different plays that, that can't be expected. So you can't really say that unless you were looking at two computers playing perfectly. And we don't even have perfectly playing computers at this point. They, uh, they're very strong. <laughs> they're very strong, but they're not perfect. So that is, it is important to point out. But we also notice that Tones has been taking a lot more time on their turns in this game down to six and a half minutes on the clock, whereas Sky is just at 13 minutes. What that means is that they started with 15 minutes on the clock and they have a 10 second increment, getting 10 seconds added to their clock after every turn. Now, Sky has been playing fairly quickly, more than 10 seconds per turn on average, of course, but uh, not too much more. Whereas Tones has taken quite a bit of time and we can see that here taking another minute or so, more than a minute on this turn. Okay, E2. All right. Uh, so I think what he's setting up for, oh. Hmm. Yeah, if you bring that stack up just like that, that's a that's a threat now. And Yeah. Now you would bring this whole stack, drop two here and then drop two here to keep it away from the capstone. Or, or I guess you could even play it at D3. Um, and then once white smashes, you just uh, bring your one, you, you bring your, uh, your caps, you drop, you do 4E3 minus, 4E3 <laughs> minus after white smashes. So you do D3 now, and then 4E3 minus after. Um, and the only thing that he can really do to mess you up is capture left onto D6. That's the only thing to stop the, the, the road. Doesn't do that though. <laughs> A 
Okay. Now, I think d3 is still good. Yeah, I think d3 is still good here. Not playing d3. Okay, I guess he's wanting to bring this wall stack down to bait the capstone into smashing. Because if he baits the capstone into smashing, then it's a road. Mm, yeah, and if he had played b1 instead, that would have been attack threat. It would have been sneaky, too, to be able to bring this whole stack, drop one, drop three, and then drop two. Yeah. That would have been good. That would have been strong. And now white drops this wall stack or this wall here. Um, black doesn't want to smash that just yet, but he can bring this stack down like he was planning on, or he can spread it left. Yeah, if he brings it down, I think that's fine. Brings down the top five. White cannot smash this. If they smash this, they leave behind a road for black. White comes over. Black can now come left here with D2. Doesn't. Okay, yeah, because placing here is now a threat for black. Black can spread this stack to the right. White can't smash still because then black comes left with d2. White needs to come up with d3 onto d4 or come left with e6 onto d6. Either of those work. The d6 capture i feel like is is the more lasting one but he does uh sky does have to stop this win does do that with the d6 capture This is where things will get tricky for black because black can't immediately renew this. Uh, black just places at e6 and then white comes up with that wall stack. Uh, white could have smashed on d1. White could have done the smash on d1. Um, white can still smash on d1. Doesn't do it leaving that smash behind probably thinking that it's still pinned when it is no longer pinned the smash on d1 is so strong and what white needs to do and they can do that right now no they can't do that right now no they can't they can't smash anymore uh they missed the opportunity They'll be able to on the following turn, uh, as long as black doesn't play at, at uh, c5. If black does not play at c5, white can smash at d1. And that's exactly what white wants to be able to do, is smash there. <laughs> so black should probably play at c5 so white does not smash d1 <laughs> you definitely want to get that flat there at c5 to stop that from happening okay now white can smash d1 makes their own threat if they do it they got to be able to see it 
Yes. Okay, so white does smash. This is now a threat that black has to stop. Black can stop that a number of ways. Um, one of them is capturing down with E1. One of them is dropping a wall here at B1. Uh, but no matter what's going on right now, white has gotten in a significantly better position than they've been for the past 20 turns. Now, black is going to have to do something on the defensive here in order to stop this. Black drops the wall. Hmm. What's the play now for white? The play is probably to bring a partial stack up onto D2. Or uh, bring over 61 left onto C1. Just bring the as much as you can carry, which is all of them except for that bottom white flat. If you bring all of those over, you'll be able to spread upwards and mess up what Black's got going on over there. And go for a vertical there. Continue this horizontal on this side. Comes up onto D2 instead. This is now a threat. Black can come down now onto E1. Black could also wall at B2. But I think coming down to E1 is better. Um, black has 7 in this stack, meaning he has to leave behind at least this bottom black flat. But yeah, coming down with E1, I, with E2, I think is the right play here. But he does drop a wall instead. It's a tough one. Tones is now down below three minutes on the clock, whereas Sky is still above ten minutes. A lot of time difference here. Tones had a very dominant position for a good part of this game. Still in a pretty strong spot, um, but not nearly as strong as it was just moments ago. Just several turns away. As soon as you let that cap that stack be captured by that capstone, things turned out poorly for, for black. Um oh man. White's wanting to spread up. What's your play here as black? Maybe walling? If you wall here, that keeps white from spreading. He doesn't. He doesn't wall. He just plays at C5. He's inviting the uh the spread the spread has happened now this is a threat for white white can come over left with e6 onto d6 for a road black can come left with with c3 or with e4 or Yeah, or up with uh, with the capstone. A lot of options here for black. Comes up with the capstone, but now... One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now he's got to leave behind these bottom three black flats if he wants to move this capstone stack anywhere. Looks like black really wanted to keep this vertical line alive. White can renew by placing at C6. If white doesn't renew, black can capture over onto F4 and then have a bigger stack there to mess with. Does play at C6. Now I imagine we're going to see C5+. Plus.
But c3 right has been the right move to play for a while. I just expect c5 plus. But yeah, this was the move to cut it off and to keep it from being renewed right away. No, he captures left. This is where the wall stack is going to come left. And then that gives protection to the F4 stack. Yeah, this is not looking great for Black. Black wants to be able to spread this down, but this wall stack is going to come right and stop that. Hmm. Yeah, it's tough to tell what, what they're going to do in this situation, but that wall move seems to be the best play. Tones down to a minute and a half on the clock. Sky is still at eight and a half minutes. Comes over with the wall stack. Black comes over with their wall. Now that it's no longer a threat, black can do that to be able to come over eventually. Yep, now white's attack is toast. Black is now in a stronger position because of that. Interesting back and forth this game, that's for sure. Now black is going to want to fill in at some point at, at C4 to be able to make their vertical threat. Interesting. What is black's play here? Oh, what's white's play? Sorry. White plays at e3. I guess black plays now at, at, uh, at c4. Makes the most sense. Well, captures over instead. Yeah, I don't think he wanted to do that just yet. He wanted to place at c4 first. Because now... Oh, no. Uh, oh, okay, this is a threat for black. Interesting threat for black. So black can capture up with E2 to make a vertical road. White can't smash this. White needs to defend against this road threat. Ooh, that's good. I was not expecting that. Now, white can just come up, or even come left. Coming up would, no, coming up wouldn't be great. Come up, and then black fills in at e3 to renew the threat. Yeah, that's not great. You'd have to bring this wall stack down. Yeah, and the wall stack does come down. Black can fill in at d2, renew the threat, and they've done that. Now black can play at f3, renew the threat. White has to leave behind that uh, bottom white flat on d3, because they have 7 in this stack now. Black can renew, though, with the F3 placement. But instead plays at B6 to go for a horizontal line. I don't know if that was the play here. But going for, the, for, the, for this. And White was able to smash this D4 stack, but not, uh, not able to anymore. Not with this C6 placement. But 
But the reason they were able to, so once that was played, white could have smashed, and that was not a threat for black. White would have been able to use this big stack here to their advantage. But now we see white dropping uh, a wall at f6. Now black just places a flat at f5, renews the tack threat. White can Black can still bring the top six and leave behind a black here to make this road. So this is a threat now. I think white needs to move this stack left or yeah, it needs to move that stack left. Oh, black only has one flat left, one reserve. Is this over? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so black wins. It's it's uh, it's Galet. Wow. That was an intense game for a, for a beginner tack tournament. We typically do not see flat wins in beginner games, but uh, we've seen one here. And that just shows that these players have gotten uh, a much better during the course of this tournament, being able to bring this to flats and, and defend against each other's threats. So congratulations to Tones for winning game two in this semi in this quarterfinals match, sorry for winning game two in this quarterfinals match. And well played to both players. And congratulations to Tones for moving on to the semifinals against a Delta. So really, really awesome. Fun to see that. Fun to see these uh, these players getting out there and playing these, these tournament games. Seeing some really interesting play from, from both of them. So thanks to both of them for playing. And thanks to everybody for watching. Be sure to check out the description below for all things TAC, especially the TAC Discord server, which is the community hub and where you can find all sorts of TAC resources like strategy guides and people to play with, whether that be right here on playtac.com or playing asynchronously right there in the Discord server itself. So thanks again for watching and until next time, have a great day and happy tacking.